Thank you, Susan. I want to thank you and your staff for helping me embark on my third career, which has been really enjoyable and interesting and informative for me, uh, being able to share part of that second career uh, with people who may or may not have actually experienced serving their country in uniform and understanding where we served, how we served, why we did it. Uh, as you know, in the first class that uh, where I was actually learning how to be a lecturer for Ollie, uh, it was a class in which I examined all the major military interventions after World War II up until the present to see how we were using our military. Uh, and as you know, I reviewed the interactions in Korea, uh, Vietnam, Afghanistan, Iraq, the rest of the Middle East, and you know, brought us up to the present. Uh, and also talked a little bit about the role of the military in society, which uh, is very interesting considering that a book just came out talking about how we almost had a uh, Reichstag type coup uh, by the last uh, administration's president. But be that as it may, uh, having, I'm honored to be invited back to provide another course. And I decided this time to kind of extend from what I had done previously, again, looking at the time period from the end of World War II to the present. Um, and at the end of World War II, as you know, the US was really the sole superpower. This time, I wanna review both the things we did right as well as the things we did wrong. Uh, and then we're gonna take a peek into the future. So, you know, I look at the things we did right in terms of establishing uh, stability and peace, rebuilding Europe, uh, you know, trying for conflict resolution with the United Nations. Uh, then I'd like to segue into the 1950s, where we look not only at diplomacy and foreign policy, but I want to look at influence operations that are done with covert power. We're, get, we're going to take a look at the CIA activities uh, and review some of the uh, things done and launched essentially by the Dulles brothers, among others, uh, in using covert power around the world to influence other governments and often to topple them and replace them. Um, you know, after we go through the 50s, you know, I'm going to talk a little more about how American diplomacy utilizes the military in the full spectrum of operations. I think we have to take a look at the other things that the military does to understand its role. You know, it's not just major combat like Vietnam, but there's deterrence operations like being in Korea. There's stability operations like being in Kosovo. Um, there's peacekeeping. There's nation building. Uh, and most important from my perspective is doing humanitarian aid and disaster relief. I wanna look at all those different kinds of operations and uh, give examples to everybody to kind of understand what the entire spectrum of operations could be. Um, and after that, I wanna look at some of the operations of those types that we did right, some that maybe we didn't do quite as well, we could have done better. Uh, and then as I all, often do in class, I'm going to question the class a little bit to think about what we did right and what we did wrong. Uh, and of course, as we do the classes, in my um, syllabus is my email. I'm totally delighted to take questions from you, you know, not only during the class, but in, in between the classes. Um, and now also in the syllabus, I will update it periodically because I'm still researching my talks and writing them. And so I'll add additional information and read aheads. Uh, for the Fifth lecture, I'm going to talk a little bit about current global threats and the zones of friction where the next big international crisis or frankly a global war could break out. Uh, that's one that I have to sort of update periodically because sometimes the threat scenario changes. Um, you know, one week all eyes are looking at Syria and northern Iraq, and the next week people are looking at the South China Sea and China sort of looming over Taiwan. Um, so we have to look at the current top threats to our national security, to our global safety. Uh, and then into our sixth lecture, I'm gonna talk about future warfare. And, and this is really important because although, you know, I've become in these courses somewhat of an amateur historian, uh, in essence, in the later years of my military career as a strategist, and so I want to take a look at the things that are affecting us um, and they're affecting us severely right now. Uh, you certainly can't escape the concept of biological warfare in the future. We just have endured a pandemic 
that totally toppled the world economy and, and changed uh, everything that we did in terms of even giving lectures on Zoom. Uh, we need to take a look at cyber warfare in a critical fashion because we are so far behind. It is an existential threat uh, to the ability of the United States to maintain our economy and our prosperity. And then we have to look at how we are going to fight conflicts in the future and whether or not we really need to keep drafting young people uh, or recruiting young people, putting them in uniform, or should we build building robots and unmanned vehicles uh, and using AI uh, as our weapons of the future, along with the, uh, the biologic and cyber warfare tools. There's, there's a lot of things going on in the future. Uh, the US works on them. Um, but as I said, I think we're a bit behind in some. But I want to give everybody kind of a critical look at all these issues, what we've done right, what we've done wrong since World War II, and then where we're going in the future and where we might have a, a world conflict and how it might be fought. Uh, and in fact, I currently think we are engaged in cyber warfare now by aggressive adversaries, and we are a bit behind. Um, we need to really talk about this a lot because it's, it is an existential threat to the safety and security of the United States and its people. So I will invite everybody to ask me questions during the class on the chat room if we can. Uh, otherwise, we can use email in between classes. Uh, I'm delighted with the fact that we're going to be in person, so I get to meet some of you because I always learn a lot from the students in my audience. And uh, again, I think it's, uh, I'm really honored to be invited back. And I want to thank Susan and her staff for the opportunity to speak to everyone and to, to offer this class uh, as kind of an amateur historian and strategist for the future.